Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to something a little bit new than what we were expecting to do. It's going to be called the Slow Down Low Down. For us here at Freaky Fast Broadcasting, we give you some of the fastest races, exciting moments, and sometimes you just need to slow down and look back at what's going on in these races. So that's exactly what we're going to do, but from kind of a production side of things, from us up at the booth, as well as we're going to be bringing in Robert Moore Jr. from a production side, and giving our thoughts on how the season's been going for all four series that we cover here on freaky fast broadcasting well for myself sam dyer i'm happy to bring you along with the journey but also joining us is going to be zach hall zach uh you get to have the fun in introducing yourself and also what how did you get into freaky fast broadcasting well that goes way back um it's it's definitely interesting uh but first off like you said introduce myself it's i'm zach hall i think i got an interesting perspective here too at freaky fast with you know broadcasting two nights a week with uh, Monday and Thursday night, and then racing in the middle with Tuesday and Wednesday. So it's uh, definitely a little bit of a mix there for me. But getting back to how I got into Freaky Fast, well, it all started just meeting Robert, uh, you know, the owner here, the producer, um, beating him back in 2016 in a in a race, joined his league, and it kind of spiraled from there. He started broadcasting. He asked me if I wanted to do it, and uh, it kind of started as a hobby. And now, I mean, look, I mean, it's 2023. It's, you know, seven years later. And we're here now, so it's uh, it's been a ride from this point, but it's uh, it's definitely been good. And I tell you what, we just keep growing each and every uh, week. We certainly have been and growing. And one of the more newer recent members to be joining with us, we've got Trevor Earhart with us. Trevor, how did you get into Freaky Fast and also introducing yourself? Well, I'm, I'm Trevor Earhart. You'll hear me on uh, Tuesday nights with Sam. Was doing Saturday nights with the WSSR guys, but uh, y'all decided to up and move on us to uh, Wednesdays and. Unfortunately, I have my own league that I got to run on Wednesday, so I don't get to partake in that fun anymore. But, uh, you know, I'm one of the newer guys that's growing on, I guess, technically year one and a half, maybe somewhere in there. Um, and it, it was because you guys, uh, I met y'all, uh, Sam, Zach, Robert, through uh, an old league I was in that y'all were broadcasting for us that uh, ended up going a little bit pear shaped. Um, but, you know, casting has always been something I've kind of enjoyed doing. I've called basketball games in, in person before, and I reached out to Robert and I was like, "Hey, if you ever get an opening, um, I'd love to come give it a shot and see, you know, see if I can help." And I ended up filling in one night on a on a Saturday night, and it kind of took off from there. And uh, here we are. It's been awesome to have you with us, Trevor. And then the boss man who's been here since day one, Robert. Get to introduce yourself and how did Freaky Fast, as short as you can, how did it start for you? Well, I am uh, Robert Moyer um, Jr. A lot of people know me by that. Um, uh, you know, how, how, how did, uh, in a short version of how did Freaky Fast start, it basically goes back to what Zach said. Um, you know, we met and uh, had a league and we grew that league and everything. And we wanted the league to be broadcasted. And we found some broadcasters here and there to help us out in the beginning of that stuff. And uh, just one day, uh, to be honest with everybody, um, everybody wanted it, you know, the series to keep on being broadcasted. We were averaging 30 plus to 40 cars, you know, every Saturday night. And I'm like, God, the, the funds just weren't there. Um, and I was like, well, maybe I could do it. So I, played that back and forth way back in 2016 somewhere around there and uh uh i decided to start freaky fast and bob skinner which is not here tonight uh that races in wssr actually came up with the name freaky fast broadcasting and uh we said yeah let's do it that sounds like a great name and that's where it started and and to finish off about why i went from racing uh, 14 years of racing to the broadcasting side that was main reason why but the second reason why i just got sick and tired of getting my butt beat every freaking week by these guys over here laughing at me right now <laughs> that i'm like i am tired of this i i'm i'm not winning and I, I i gotta do something else and i said well if i can't beat them i might as well do something else and well here we are seven years later and it's been a great opportunity for all of us to be joining in. And my name is Sam Dyer. I joined Freaky Fast Broadcasting, crazy thing, almost a little bit over two and a half years ago now. And it's been a pleasure to join. And it's been an amazing journey of seeing how this broadcast team has ebbed and flowed through those two and a half years that I've been here. But I know, Robert, you've seen the most of it. And 
Cannot wait to get a deep dive into these leagues that we cover. We got four leagues that we cover throughout the week. Monday night, it's the ISRC Truck Series. Tuesday, it's the Full Send Racing Series and Xfinity Car. Then we got two leagues in the Gen 4. Wednesday night being the WSSR Cup Series and Stars and Stripes Series on Thursday. Four broadcasts in a row and might as well start off from the top going to Monday isrc truck series isrc truck series just a little bit of history with us and that league we've been covering them since day one all the way back in september 13th of 2021 where they were under a different name at the time of the naiscc truck series then in season three branched away from the cup series that we once were broadcasting to become their own entity known as the isrc truck series in july of 11th of 2022 we're currently in season five and this season, it's been a wild one. There have been seven different winners in eight races so far. And one of the furthest leagues throughout their season about to be hitting closer to the playoffs. Very close. And certainly a lot of action has been happening. Most recently, we're just at Sonoma where Zach and I got to cover that race. Zach, certainly a dominant race by Danny Cochran yeah. who got the win. But man, uh, from your perspective, how was the race on your end? I mean, personally, we it was funny to watch the domination of Danny Cochran because, again, his start to the season, and really ever since he's won the championship two seasons ago, it is it, we've documented it on the broadcast, and if anybody's watched out there, if you haven't seen it, though, it's been turmoil. I mean, it's been good runs that just either he ends up in a wreck, just something goes wrong with the mistake himself or gets caught up in something, but that dominant performance at Sonoma was so impressive to see from him that uh, – I think it's something he can carry on for himself. But the racing from like second on back was amazing. I mean, it was uh, it was almost moments where you forgot about Danny because of how good the racing was back there. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was probably one of the better Sonoma races I've called in a while. Yeah, it was actually it was so much fun to watch. Like you said, that battle for second was what we watched primarily most of the time. And getting to see Trenton jump Ryan Bird, they had their squabbles of Ryan Bird accidentally spinning the 46 around and then Trenton coming back, fighting to get his payback, ultimately finishing in second. But it was Danny Cochran leading 38 of the 40 laps. The only driver that led laps was actually Cody Reed, who found himself staying out with an odd strategy of not pitting which was kind of odd. There were only two drivers that did that strategy. We also had Oli Fonseca, who had a very off night, mainly because he was on a different rig, which we didn't know at the time, uh, which I'm <laughs> happy we learned after the fact. I didn't say anything because I, I almost got myself in trouble about to say something silly on the broadcast, talking about how I thought Oli was having probably the worst night ever, and I was completely lost on why. Yeah, it was weird um, for him. So that's interesting to hear that he was on a different rig. So that, that can throw you off a ton because I can tell you from – you know, myself, I race two nights a week, and uh, if I was in a different, you know, rig, it kind of becomes your home, and you get used to it, how everything's set up, and having a different feel could really throw you off as a driver, so I'm, you know, I'm not surprised to see that from him, but still, nonetheless, that race was cool with the strategy, too. I mean, like you said, Cody Reed and Fonseca also both stayed out there. We've seen that strategy used before, but this time, like we talked about, Sam, we didn't think it was the greatest strategy. It j it, I mean, it worked out for Cody at the end of the day where it got him, but possibly could have been, I think, a little farther out with the pace he had, especially qualifying second. Yeah, you really just gave up the pace, hoping the strategy was going to work at the end of the day. And we bring in Robert Moyer with into the conversation. I mean, Robert, from a producer side of things, I know road courses aren't your favorite thing to be producing, yeah. but how yeah. was it from your end for that snowmobile race? Oh man, that Sonoma race and uh, just uh, was was awesome. My point of view of watching it and how uh, you know watching what Mark Whitley did in his qualifying, trying to do a little bit of trickery here and there that backfired on him, and he winded up way in the back of the field and worked his way up through. You know, within the five laps, like had ten ten vehicles pass, but couldn't. You know, he was just overdriving the vehicle to try to make up all that ground that he he lost out on, but. Watching it and producing it in the background, um, it, it gets a little boring trying to produce um, a road course because you don't have a lot of action going on. So you got to follow the commentators of Zach and, you know, Trevor and everybody else and you, Sam, you know, of the pinpoints of what you guys are talking about and trying to get to that point and watching that kind of action of what you're talking about because it gets so spread out that I, I can literally just sit here and just 
push any buttons that I want, and it, it really doesn't matter, you know, unless you got some hard-nosed battling going on, which we seen there towards the end with uh, somebody like uh, Christopher Norris trying to take the shortcut that uh, is not meant to take a shortcut, um, but, you know, things like that. So as producing-wise, it, it can be very boring, um, but... You know, that's that's part of the broadcasting. You're going to have your good races and you're going to have your bad races or mediocre races, whatever you want to call it. I don't want to say bad, but let me rephrase that. You know what I mean? The, the races that are just not as more intense like, you know, other ones can be. Yeah, man. I mean, I understand that also. I mean, there's some points. I think that's kind of where the talent kind of comes in with the booth of us trying to bring in that energy in, in some ways mm -hmm. and also trying to build some if you could say fake uh plots in some fashions i mean it, it, yeah. trying to bring up that energy to help the audience in and trevor i know that you were a driver in the isrc truck series for a bit now kind of a, a fan who checks in every once in a while did you check in on that race or did you kind of miss uh, on the snowman one uh i watched i think i i, I watched the start of it and had to go around and do some things uh and then i tuned back in and I kind of had a feeling uh, the last couple of times they've run at Sonoma, uh, Danny's been really quick there. Um, and I think one at the first time they went there, if I'm not mistaken, with a, a no pit strategy. And then the second time they went, um, I think he was running up front and something happened. Uh, but wasn't surprised to see him up there. Was kind of surprised to see the gap because you expect, uh, you know, Trenton Jump, Mark Whitley, uh, even Christopher Norris now. I mean, those guys are, are really quick uh on the road courses so i expected them to be a little bit closer but not at all surprised to see danny uh, get the win there yeah and, yeah i mean that domination was wild to see crazy i i don't i mean we've seen danny do well at sonoma it just seems to be his sleeper track that you just know hey Sonoma's yeah. there he's gonna get a good finish and maybe that can change his fates moving forward and Speaking about moving forward, we'll look at the point standings because with that race, that is the eighth race so far of the 11 races for the regular season. We've only got three more after uh, Sonoma is done, with, which is going to be Bristol, Chicagoland, and Richmond. And point standings wise, like we said, we got ourselves seven different winners. So that's seven locked in mm -hmm. positions. Potentially, there's one that is on the cusp. And that's kind of some notable drivers I want to talk on of Chase Schaefer have not seen that driver since he won at uh most sport at, at that of canadian tire i should say and i'm curious if he's ever, even going to show back up because if he doesn't that win is going to be nullified and he's not going to be making it into our playoffs i think that's the huge question sam um i, I from what i've heard at least it doesn't seem like he's returning um we haven't got confirmation so don't you know, take this to anybody, but we don't think, I don't think he's going to be coming back. So that win's just going to kind of get thrown out there. But what a battle. I mean, really, for, for the points. I mean, you look at 12th right now of Ryan Bird. I mean, he, even Dakota Moniz at 11th, they're 99 back from the leader. I mean, you go all the way to, you know, Malik Kuntz there, it's 104 back from the leader. Like, I mean, that's literally like six points or, you know, five, six points separating literally like five, six drivers so right there at the tail end of the thing. And if someone wins also, because Malik's got that win right there at the, uh, you know, 15th in points, it's it's going to get tricky, especially with these three races, you know, in my opinion, three different tracks of completely different skill sets. You know, Bristol is the high banks of the concrete. You got Chicagoland for its mile and a half intermediate style, and then Richmond more of the flatter, a little bit D-shaped, uh, you know, mile size racetrack. So it's three different concepts, and uh, I'm interested to see who's going to pull it off because – there's some guys that are right on that cut line that you wouldn't probably expect it, especially with some of the seasons they had last season. Yeah, and 16 drivers going to make it into the playoffs, and right now that bubble driver is Logan Brakey. The one thing for Logan, though, that he can take with a little bit of, of grace is the driver behind him is Kyle Rochelle, who is 28 points back. So if you're going to get knocked out, it's most likely going to be someone that's already won that's outside of that top 16 that they could pot potentially bump somebody out. But if you just finish in the top 10 top 15 you should be moving on if you're already in the top 16 in points that's the way it's looking for sure with the points right now it's it's still interesting you know you you know like he's safe points wise right now logan brakey but if someone was to get that one that's where the concern would be and that's where it's close for the drivers pretty much from ninth on down and i mean even like looking at someone like logan brakey i mean for him to be even considering playoffs i'm sure is still 
uh, got to be a good feeling because, I mean, look back at last season. He had 10 top 10s. He's only had one top 10 this season, and it was the first race of the season. Pretty much ever since then, it's been kind of a drought for that uh, that truck. So I'm interested to see if he can kind of clean it up in these three races and maybe get some momentum to head into his playoffs and continue back on kind of the runs he had last season where it was more mm-hmm. right at the fringe of the top 10. You know, good good runs. Hoping for those good runs. Uh, well, I throwing it to Robert or Zach. Any final thoughts on the ISRC guys before we move on to another day? Oh, no. The only thing I got to add on to what you guys were uh, talking about was the point standings. Um, you know, just looking at it, well, like, you know, what Zach said, you know, hopefully Logan can get, can get on a run. Um, I do believe he's got, the, you know, the speed, he's got the talent, and he has shown that last year. Um, but just from first all the way down to, you know, 15th, it's any given driver on any given night. Um, I mean, look what happened last year when we went to uh, Bristol and there was that big calamity in turn number one or the whatever Bristol race that was. Were we going to see something like that again, you know, or in the mid race or something or take out them top runners, you know, built in traffic or anything like that. So, you know, just I, I, these next three races are are key to make the playoffs by all them drivers that are built in there. So, um, you know, so I'd recommend everybody to go back and watch that race or, you know, watch it live if this video comes out whenever, you know, that. But um, that's what I'm looking at as a producer. When I get ready to produce something, I'm like, okay, I got my cameras here, 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 here. This is what I'm going to do. And then all of a sudden we get this kaboom. And it's like, uh (laughs) uh-oh, um, um, crap. What do I do? Okay, go here. Oh, wait, I got to get replay button. Oh, crap. I'm not even, I'm literally not even ready for the replay on lap one of turn number one. Yeah, that Bristol literally. race was crazy when uh, yeah. I think that was like three quarters of the field all caught up in like an instant yeah. wreck, like coming yeah. into turn three. Uh, yeah, the second, second time that's happened there because I remember I was running. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think the last season I, I was full time there. Uh, that happened like really early on in the race was kind of the same yeah. thing, like half the field got involved in a wreck early on yeah but at least i had time to get to the replay button <laughs> turn one to turn <laughs> i didn't have time to do anything and sam's like this guy and this guy's involved oh my god they're just not stopping yeah that, like well because <laughs> it was like three different wrecks that happened at like the same time you had the leaders take each other out and then you had the middle of the field take each other out then everyone in the back wasn't able to slow down they were piling nope. in it just was <laughs> utter yeah. chaos I, I, yeah I'm gonna say yeah. I can't watch the Bristol race on Monday just because it just still just yeah. brings back, it brings back memories, man. I, <laughs> I was gonna ask you. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna I ask PTSD. Trevor. I have PTSD, <laughs> and you know what the bad part is? Like I've run that track in, in other leagues, and I will find a way to just trip over myself. I, I pulled a Zach last time we were there. I sped down pit road, and so yeah, just Bristol oh. and me, it's PTSD, man. It's terrible. <laughs> I know how it be, man. I know how it be. <laughs> Trust me. <Yeah. laughs> And I mean, to top it all off as well, I mean, for Zach and I and Robert, this is going to be when they go back for that Bristol oh. race. It's going to be our third Bristol race in a row. Ooh, and if we were calculating oh, the right. numbers. It was supposed to be like 650 laps, but because they went into overtime, tack on a couple of more laps on top of that, <laughs> we've covered a lot of Bristol. <laughs> yeah. We ain't done yet either. No. So we got Three one more nights tackle. of broadcasting at 650 laps plus. Yeah, I am uh, done with Bristol. <laughs> gotta, get, gotta get through Monday. Gotta get one more. Monday. One more. Yeah, one, one more. more. One, one more. more. <laughs> they keep telling me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, go moving away from Bristol and the thoughts of that, and moving away from Mondays. We go from the truck series to Xfinity cars, where the drivers of the full send racing series have had themselves. Into this most recent season, it has been a a lot of unknown as well of who's going to come out and show a lot of pace as we've been seeing drivers from up and down through the field showing some quality runs for themselves. Certainly, we've had a lot of dominance uh, from Ross Tatum. We've seen the rookies show out. But for the Full Send Racing Series, for us here at Freaky Fast Broadcasting, we've been covering these guys since their third season, all the way back in July of uh, July 26th of 2022. 
And with this being their fifth season, they're back in the Xfinity car. This series is very interesting. They flip flop from the Xfinity car to the truck series and they go back and forth, whatever season they are moving towards. And in the next one, like I said, three different winners this season, but the most recent was at Michigan with seeing Brian McCann get into victory lane. Uh, he's getting his second win of the season on top of that. Be looking like a very dominant rookie that can challenge our very own Zach for the championship. As Zach won the championship last season. But Trevor, we were talking about it before we started recording for this recap uh, podcast. The big one. That's really the only thing you really could talk about about that race before moving forward. What was going through your mind? Because we just got done with the stage and then calamity hits. Yeah, I was I was expecting more from what we had at the beginning uh, of that race. I mean, we saw a lot of great side by side, three wide action throughout the the first you know twenty five laps of that uh, to get to the stage. And I was thinking we were going to get some more of that. And then just it was it was one of those classic uh, thought you were clear kind of things, and a little bit of movement from both drivers, uh, top and bottom. Uh, Cole Sketty and, and Chris Stevens uh, going into turn one, just kind of met in the middle Cole came up Chris came down and I mean it set off 15 car wreck I mean Zach you had the perfect shot of it I mean you were right in the middle of it but I mean it took out pretty much everybody yeah. from like 10th to 25th it seemed like yeah that, that was a tough one um it, it was kind of just a racing deal from where I was sitting you know it's you know three wide I think Stevens is trying to give the car on the outside a little bit of room so he doesn't squeeze him up in the wall and then Zucchetti's naturally arcing out towards the corner you know you got to turn in and I can't fault either of them you know for it so I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time unfortunately that was a very tough race first of all I think we'll get more into kind of how the race was but yeah that first wreck <laughs> was very unfortunate and the other thing is that this car very unforgiving damage model in the Xfinity car because it's just old. It hadn't been updated. And, I mean, I had right front damage pretty much. Just got hit in the right front, T-boned. And I had, like, 33 minutes of damage. So, and there was people with front ends and rear ends gone that still were out there after 10 minutes of fixing. So, the damage model in that car needs some updating. But it's uh, it's definitely was a wild wreck. Let's just say that. It was a big hit. It was a, a massive wreck overall. Uh, coming to the, the end of the stage, it was Brian McCann winning the stage, and then the wreck happened. And Robert, as a producer, yeah. I know you were, I think you were hopping on an onboard right when it happened. Yes. What was going through your mind when you just saw, oh, two cars are involved, three cars, oh, no, the field's involved? Um, <laughs> what went through my mind is I was like, okay, we're going to do an onboard, you know, and that turn going out. And I do believe I hopped on with, oh, I can't remember who I hopped on with. I know it was right around Zach, um, in, in that area. And I hopped on and instantly I seen the car go towards the wall and my brain instantly went, change cameras quick. So I, I don't even know what camera I hit. I just hit a camera and next minute I knew I just seen carnage, this car hitting that car, that car going there, that car going up on top of the other car car hitting the wall and everything and you were you were freaking out in the background sam and trevor's like sitting there waiting for you to stop freaking out <laughs> and he's like oh my god there's a big one and yeah and my brain instantly went wow um and you know that that's the thing that people don't know with <laughs> with my poor commentators in the background every once in a while if i forget to mute myself they do hear me scream and yell a lot sometimes back here going oh my god i can't believe that just happened oh my god you know screaming and just ha enjoying myself having fun watching watching the race um and listening to you guys commentate and um so, but yeah, that, that was my overreaction going, okay, now we had about 15 cars involved into this. I got to get at least two camera views of the replay. So I'm going to start here and then I'm going to go back again to on this car. And then I'll go back again on another car to try to get different views because, you know, we got feedback from our viewerships that are, were asking, you know, different views of, of the wrecks and things like that. So, um, that's something that I, uh, I've been working on in the background here, um, uh, producing wise to try to give a different point of view of the incident that happened. So, yeah, and you know, the the feedback, we try to get the feedback from the drivers after a season's over, get what they're liking, not liking, and I gotta say, it's been a, a blast. I mean, when I hopped on to Freaky Fast Broadcasting, I was still learning how to become a, a broadcaster, and Robert, it's been a pleasure to watch you grow as a producer mm -hmm. on, on everything you. that we've been adding in, and just as us as a group, seeing that yep. growth, and um, 
it's been great to watch people liking what we've been doing. And after the big one, I know Zach, you didn't like the way that your car was handling after that. Um, <laughs> you were just trying to putter and, and make it around. Yeah. Um, but then we got to see just a group of six, seven drivers battling it out from there on out. There was a, a late caution of, uh, I think it was Jacob Grant. He, his engine expired and he didn't have yes. any way to get to pit road because yep. Michigan has the weird, we talked about how the Xfinity car hasn't been scanned for a new damaged <laughs> model. Michigan needs a new scan as well for the cautions because yes. it doesn't matter where you're on track unless you're in the grass. It's going to throw a yellow if you stop mm -hmm. and there's oncoming traffic. So with Jacob Grant down on the apron, it still brought out the yellow. And then after that, it turned into strategy, which Trevor, were you surprised by the strategy calls that were made during that race? Because I know for myself, I was completely baffled on some of the drivers that were staying out. Yeah, you know, you 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 have the guys in the back that, that always come in a couple, you know, five, six laps earlier than, than what we expect. Uh, but, you know, Brian McCann uh, played it played that strategy perfect came in i think two laps earlier than uh cameron sarton and a couple of those other guys and just was able to build the gap uh to where he needed to and was able to hang on and i think you know hindsight's 2020 if you if you're cameron and a couple of those other guys who stayed out uh, two laps longer um you know you you're hoping that the the advantage of the fresher tires can get you back out there, but then you got to fight through traffic. I mean, he had to go through uh, Ken Campbell, uh, Christopher Norris. Um, I think there was somebody else up in front of him that he had to get through. And I mean, those are not Bustler. Yes, yeah. that's right, Bustler. I mean, those aren't easy guys to pass mm -hmm. in in general, and they're not just going to roll over and let you by. Uh, so he had to work for it. And in the end, I mean, he got it to within a, within a second. Um, just ran out of time, but. Uh, to your point of guys staying out late, I think it was uh, John John Dart and uh, a couple of the other guys. Yeah. A couple of the guys that were damaged, I think, from the wreck that stayed out, just hoping for a caution to flip the track position because we saw it the the week before at Dover um, with uh, with Ross when he was able to to do that with a damaged car, flip the track position, was able to come home with the win. So those guys uh, were trying to do that, just unfortunately never caught the caution. I think that's the big thing for Ross is I think that he was trying that same strategy again and was hoping that he would get that same luck because he was also one of those drivers that stayed out. And once he got back out on track after staying out like eight laps longer than uh, yeah. McCann, he was like 15 seconds back and had no chance of running them back down. But yeah. uh, the one thing I liked about Brian McCann is he kind of telegraphed what he was going to do all race long because at every stint that he came into pit road, he was trying to pull out the gap a little bit further each time. He led the most laps, so he had the most knowledge on what was going to work and found himself in a victory lane for himself in the eight machine, like I said, for the second time this season. But then we look over at the point standings where it's still shocking to look at. There Really, when I was talking to Trevor before we went recording this, there's only two drivers I could think of, and it was the two that were part of the big one that are kind of shocking how far down they are in the points of Cole Sacchetti and Chris Stevens. Yeah, I mean, you look at those 34th or uh, 33rd and 30 fifth respectively cole's Kitty over chris stevens and they both have had great speed we we know cole's fast um yeah. I mean, he's he's shown it since season three when we started covering these guys that we we know he's got speed chris one of the new guys has shown speed but they've both just been caught up in, in incidents you have michigan uh i think they were both caught up in incidents at uh dover as well so mm -hmm. it's it's really knocked them down the points i think i'm gonna go out on a limb i think both of them will probably get a win this season um Ooh. Really? I don't. Yeah, I, I, I know Cole's going to get a win somewhere. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's just inevitable. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Chris, Chris has shown speed. I think just the the luck hasn't been there. I don't know if he'll get it before we get to the playoffs, but I, I think that uh, that fourteen car is going to be one that you're going to have to watch out for. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, Zach, I want your point of view on the point yeah. standings as a driver because I know that you're coming off of your championship that you got last season with these guys in kind of a dominant fashion of yeah. your seven wins. But yeah, anything, freaky fast. You're carrying <laughs> the banner proudly. What yeah. uh, what are what are there any surprises that you're seeing so far this season for yourself personally uh, or any other drivers? Um, well, Brian McCann. First off, hats off to that guy because. Uh, I think this is two times now. Well, Michigan, I think, was in a better position to win that race anyways, either way he played the strategy. But he's timed his strategy with his pit calls, I feel like, flawlessly. That's feel like that's one thing he's been at. And he's just been good overall. Like, um, to have him join the series, that's been awesome to see. And, I mean, two wins already to start off, you know, four, first four races in and his first four races here. I mean, that's 
that's really, really good for him. So uh, I'm interested to see how he's going to battle out. I think uh, there's other guys down there like Cole Sketty. I mean, I think that's almost a guarantee he gets a win. That dude is amazing. I, I love racing Cole. One of my favorite guys to race out there in that league. And I think a win is right around the corner. I mean, he can win at any track. I mean, road courses, any <laughs> any style, that guy's really, really good at anything. But then, I mean, I look even more like, you know, guys like my teammate Andrew Mellon, he's had a good start. You know, last season it was tough for him, man. Like, he seemed like he couldn't get out of, you know, an incident. And now this season, it seems like it's been going a little better for him. Christopher Norris, I mean, he's been performing the best of us. I, I, you know, I'm lucky to be 10th. That is one thing I will say when I look at the points. When I see myself as 10th in points, I'm like, you know, that, that that's not where I want to be. But with what the season's been, other than Chicagoland, I don't think I've had a chance to be a top five car or really – in any of the races, the other three races, uh, Chicago and I feel like was the one that got away, of course, but we'll have more chances later in the season. But man, it's, it's so close. This, with the new addition to all these new drivers and even guys like Chris Stevens, who's back there, I think he's one to watch out for. I, I'm not surprised by your call there to say he can get a win, Trevor, because he is showing speed. I've noticed it. I, I mean, I can see it when I'm out there. There's guys like my two buddies from Cat Five, uh, you know, Cedric Hunter and Brandon Colley. Those two, I think, can go out there and win a race, possibly. Yeah. That, come and joined yep. in robert sherwood is another guy i think from past seasons that's one that's down the order i mean there's there's tons of talent in this league and it's uh it's gonna be tough this season i tell you it's gonna be a, a battle all the way down to it and that's the thing is that's different is they take 12 drivers i think that's the one thing that we gotta notice that's different than other leagues is where they take 16 they take 12 so to have 12 out of 46 drivers who competed this season that's uh it's gonna be a tight-knit group yeah, it certainly is. And I think that call on Cedric might be the big one to watch out for because he was doing start and park for the first three races. He's trying to get mm -hmm. full time and I he's already shown a lot of speed. I'm expecting him to really show out these next couple of weeks. Robert, the upcoming anything your schedule. Point? Yeah, the upcoming schedule is, uh, is Atlanta on that schedule first full send uh, for that of full send. I believe it's, looking it's at Iowa. it, it's Iowa, yeah, Iowa said New, New Hampshire, the more spa. Yeah. Um, I think for maybe no the Atlanta. second, the second half might have Atlanta, but I think it might okay. be. Well, because you know you're talking about there's somebody else out there that we can't forget about, uh, Brandon Colley. Um, yeah, you yeah. go to Atlanta, look out. That guy's got speed as long as he can stay out of the carnage sometimes. And uh, some some of it's his doing, some of it's not his doing. That's just the way racing is. Um, I mean, but oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Uh, I mean, he got a top ten. Uh, in Michigan with the damage race car, he was yeah, involved yeah. in that big wreck. Right, I mean, right, right. 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 In, good night. In, in, not only that, in the Barbie car. Um, so, <laughs> right. you know, That's shout right. out to that one there, too. But, <laughs> I, I, you know, we, we cover some really great leagues throughout the week. Uh, every single one of them we do. And we really got good racing uh, every, every single night we go live, guys. Um, and, and ladies and gentlemen that watch us. And I'm not just saying that to put us on a pedestal. I'm being dead serious. Full send is stacked field from top to bottom. Uh, Monday night, same thing. Wednesday night that we're going to soon talk about here. And Thursday night, um, how they go caution-free and things like that. So, I mean, there's never a disappointing night of what are we going to come in in because as, co as a commentator, you guys, and as a producer, we look at a track and go, oh, this might be boring. But the time that the broadcast is over, we go, what just happened? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Those are those are the best yeah. surprises when yes. you're like you yeah. go in, you're like, okay, is this gonna be more of a fight for <laughs> us to really dig deep make in the some of the lore notes that we have stacked up, or are yeah. the drivers just gonna make it entertaining where we really don't have to do that much hard work and heavy yep. lifting on our end? And yeah, all exactly. these leagues have done it. I mean, full send, they they got yeah. the identical yep. drivers finishing that just yeah. got our uh our top five finish number yeah, one yeah i mean that's crazy i never seen yeah. that in my eye racing career four yep. right two so you, you look at that race they have the two dual races that are yes. right yeah point oh oh five finishes yeah yeah the the stage was point oh oh six oh <laughs> yeah. that's right yeah and then the the race <laughs> is a literal photo finish yeah. that <laughs> i don't even know how i racing judges who wins that it just <laughs> gave it to to tony brent and wow. and hats off to tony i mean that mm -hmm. that whole texas speed team uh coming in and I, the first race out the gate he gets a gets a win in, in probably the most epic way you could get a win well as a producer i do know in i racing that they go down to point zero 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 one um 
with the programs that we use on the outside to show the live viewers that the SDK ATVO they're not built to see them 0. 0.0000 numbers they go by 0. 0.01 whatever you know what I mean there might be two right. zeros or whatever yeah missed out of it so our our scoring sheet's going to show way different than what i racing is going to because it's going off of what it thinks it's seeing but so the viewer so i'm just letting the viewers know that it, there is two different and that's why i racing determined him as the winner because i think it was probably like 0. 0.02 you know to 0. 0.03 you know, whatever it would be. Yeah, it was yes. some of the crazier finishes that we've seen. Uh, crazy, and, crazy. And, you know, touching on Texas Speed, I mean, that group as a whole, I think it's been mm -hmm. awesome to see how chat also. Now, that's also another fact that we really don't chat talk about very them. often. That is the chat's favorite team to cheer they on for. <laughs> that they do. They they are. Uh, I mean, as a, as a as a team, they they either have two cars kind of up at the front or all four of them, five of them. I think there is there, is there four or five. I think there's four. I think the, there's, there's four. There's four the full thing. time. There's a yeah. fifth that's yeah. part time. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I think you, you'll see one or two of them kind of up at the front or they're all involved in the same wreck. Yeah. Pretty much the same time. <laughs> they're, all, they're all like around each other every yeah. time. So it, it's kind of funny for those guys. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and they have a no give up. Like those guys have a no mm -hmm. give up mentality because they are running out there. They don't care how damaged the vehicle is. They are going to go until that car quits. <laughs> well, that's that's good. I mean, good I, to go. I, 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 yeah, I mean, you want to still put in the laps, right? Seat time is pretty key. Yeah, yep. I mean that's that's why. I mean, I look at the standings. That's why uh, Jonathan Burt right now is just outside. I think he's nine points out from the cutoff line. He's in sixteenth in points. Yep. That dude. Tyler Thomas is only 13 back too. Yeah, I mean they're fighting for everything, and it's it's a fun group to watch. Next race yeah. for those guys going to be at Iowa. Zach, have you practiced yet for Iowa? Do you know anything about that track for the Xfinity car? Or is it kind of a good luck? Uh, uh, it's a good track for me. Um, I, it depends again on the balance. Like these cars, that's the one thing I love about switching. Like how they switch from trucks to Xfinity is they're two different stylistically, guys. Like the similar driving techniques that you have to use but again the balance and how the the car handles is just different and it, it's hard to explain but we'll see how Iowa works if if it's the if the race car can turn we're going to have a great race there that is one thing i will say you'll be able to move around the racetrack and find whatever grip you want to pass people i think if we're a little bit tight the clean air could play a huge pivotal role like it does a lot of times in i race i mean i think clean air is always king for sure but uh, I think Iowa could put on a show because it does have the possibility to spread out, like especially in three and four. So I'm excited at that. But um, I mean, I, I hopefully for myself, I get the ball rolling because <laughs> it's been a, a little of a slow start. But we'll get it going. We're hoping for you to get that win for yourself again. Start this season five on the right foot. Still early in the season. Again, they've only ran four races. Number five is going to be at Iowa. Now, as we move from Tuesday, we talked about pause. Wait a minute. Sorry for taking you away from your great content for the first pilot episode of the Slowdown Lowdown. We want to let you know, hey, if you haven't subscribed yet, you need to do so immediately. It helps us out here at Freaky Fast Broadcasting to get more eyes and viewers on our broadcast, which internally also means it's going to be helping the drivers out in the leagues that we cover. More eyes helps both of us. So remember, subscribe, like, hit that comment button, comment what you've been enjoying about the Slowdown Lowdown and any of our other great broadcasts and content pieces we give you. Thank you for uh, listening for this little snippet. Now let's get back to the rest of the pilot episode of the Slowdown Lowdown really the level of competition. I think Wednesday might be the highest level of competition out of all the series that we cover. And that's where we find ourselves with the WSSR Cup Series. Now, this series has been in deep lore. Talk about digging deep. Well, that's digging deep in Freaky Fast Broadcasting's history books <laughs> as the first ever Ooh. broadcast for Freaky Fast Broadcasting for the WSSR was when they did the duels all the way back in season one, February 8th, 2020, right before the pandemic struck was <laughs> when we started covering the WSSR. Yep. Wow. And we are now currently in season seven, but there was a little bit of hiatus. There was like a year, year and a half mm -hmm. where there wasn't any racing going on for the WSSR, but we've been back and it's been Awesome to have the series back this season. Six different winners in six different races. 
And I think that's the biggest thing that we can talk about of, I know Zach as a driver and, and Robert for I, I as a producer, Trevor, it's kind of hard for you to be a part of the conversation because I know you're racing that night uh, in a different league. But I mean, Zach, we just ran at Bristol, kind of the start of our trilogy mm -hmm. of Bristol racing. Yeah. Uh, what was your thoughts on that race? Because I know it was a long one for us, two overtime attempts with 14 cautions. Uh, yeah, long race for sure. Uh, 200 laps is grueling always at Bristol in we knew as like a general consensus going in as a league saying this is probably going to be one of the bumpiest nights because I think one thing if folks haven't tuned in during our races for the Gen 4 for Wednesday and Thursday nights, you will find out very quickly that rear bumper contact from front bumpers is not a good thing in those cars. Uh, in Bristol, what does it bring out? The bump and run. That's I mean, that's the classic track where it happened. And so you classically will have those incidents where people run in the back of each other. And I think that's kind of what happened. You had those checkups where drivers are checking up for somebody and running in the back of somebody and it causing an incident. And this race get, the race gets later on and later on. Everybody just gets more aggressive and they just send it and <laughs> it starts to become a little bit of a, you know, a, a caution fest. But we, uh, we had a good run there for that one bit. I tell you, it was some of the most fun I've had because I started in 16th. Um, fell back to 28th, drove all the way back to 19th before I got wrecked and brought out that yellow. But we were, I think, from first all the way to, like, 23rd, we were three seconds within each other. Like, we were all stacked up. You could tell the guys who were struggling were just trying to hold on up top, and the guys who were fast were trying to go on the bottom and pass them. So it was, it was really cool. I wish we could have stayed green because I think that's the one thing that held that race back. And it's that track at the beginning, especially with the Gen 4, you have tons of grip. So you can really send it around the racetrack, and it's very one groove at that time. But as the run goes on and you burn your stuff up, the drivers that have saved their equipment can move all around. They can go to the top. They can go to the bottom. And I think if we would have got like a 60, 70 lap run like that, you would have seen a ton of passing. But uh, nonetheless, it went better than I thought. I will say that, as a, especially as a league owner. Like, you know, as a driver, it didn't go the greatest. It was not fun for me. But as a league owner, I think Bristol could have went a lot worse. <laughs> I think it could have for sure. Uh, Robert, any, any of your thoughts as uh, just wanted to, before I throw it to you officially, uh, the driver that won was John Forbes. He also led the most laps, but beating out Larry Yingling, who we thought was going to be the driver to win that race. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, but watching, you know, the, the way the race played out and everything. Um, like Zach said, um, as producing wise, um, again, it's, you know, it's Bristol and it can be really tough in the background trying to keep up with all the action going around because again, that's a half mile track, um, running, you know, 14 nines, 14 eights, 15 second lap times around that thing. Um, and it, it's, it's before, you know, it, things are passing so fast that you're 20 laps into the race and you're, you didn't even get a chance to get the sponsor stuff ready to go yet. Um, you know, so it, it, it takes a lot in the background as a producer to keep up with everything that's going on the best that you can. Um, so I do fight with that at short tracks like that, especially at a Bristol or Martinsville or things like that. But yeah, that, that race was uh, awesome to watch. I mean, uh, quote me again on it. How many vehicles started? 38? 34. 35. 35. Oh, 34. Okay. 34. Yeah. Is yeah, 34. It, was, it was right there. Yeah. yeah. So 30, 34 vehicles at Bristol. Um, two pit roads you know it, it's uh, pit stalls on both sides it's crazy um because i couldn't even i i i think i maybe broadcast or produced one uh one race before in the past um with uh, both pit stalls on both sides you know being used and before i don't know if you guys you weren't there zach but i did ask uh sam i'm like um is both stalls being <laughs> used and sam's like yeah and i'm like Oh crap! Okay, um, how am I gonna do this? Okay, I, 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 you know, so I try. I really, honestly, this time I just stayed away from the um, pit stalls. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I just stayed away and just kept it on the track and then left it at that. But overall, it was a great race, if you ask me. Oh, I mean, like those cautions were going by so quickly cool. for for us yeah. in the booth. It's I know for the drivers, it's probably okay. Good, we're out, we're done, we're back on to racing. For us, yeah, from the booth side of things, it is so difficult to get into a rhythm sometimes with the amount of cautions mm -hmm. we were having, and yeah. usually with the mile tracks, mile and a half tracks, you can kind of be like, okay, we got a lap to do sponsor reads if we have to, or interview a driver, or just kill time and kind of just talk about anything we want to. But man, these short tracks, you got to be quick on it. Otherwise, you're lost in an instant. Yeah, 
Yeah, and what makes that tough too, Sam, is as a producer, you know, we got times that we, we need to stop so we can take a drink or whatever, you know, in the background and just catch our breath and calm down and get our heads refocused on maybe, you know, the second half or, you know, of the race. And at a Bristol track like that, it's like, okay, do I play a minute commercial, minute and a half, minute 25, 40 second, you know, before you know it, the time you hit that commercial, the commercial's over and you're back already. And it's like, I didn't even get a chance to take a drink. You know, it's <laughs> like, okay, you know, you're basically getting up and running in the background doing other things um, that need to be done that your body says needs to be done. But, and you don't have time. You got to run and then run back. And it's, it's, uh, as a producer, I don't have to rush. I can actually tell you guys, okay, I'm putting it on most exciting. Run with it until I get back. So I'm the lucky one on that part. But other than that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Unless a caution comes out, which then we're like, yeah. oh no. Well, then, <laughs> that, that, but I bring my, I bring my phone along, guys, because I watch <laughs> it on YouTube. And if I see it, then I go into that hurry up, like a fire stage run, like, okay, <laughs> you know, uh, just, you know absolutely. Fast and hop. <laughs> well, I know that the race, uh, going back to it, I know the Bristol race, Larry Yingling was looking like he was going to dominate, take it away, but mm -hmm. kind of an odd thing you don't see very often on iRacing in real life you see it happen way more often is everyone doing the opposite of what the leader does of yeah. Larry staying out and everyone else in the field coming into pit road forcing him in the back I, I want it from I know from my point of view I said it on the broadcast I've never really seen that before on iRacing uh, I know Robert was saying that in my ear he hasn't really seen it either but Zach have yeah. you ever seen that happen before <laughs> Oh, uh, I've actually had it happen to me once <laughs> before, one time before where I've been the lone man and it's the worst feeling ever. And it's funny that you brought that up because I was actually getting the lucky dog that time going around and I saw everybody hitting pit road. And then I saw one car just sitting behind the face car. I, when I went by Larry, I ain't gonna lie. I was waving at him. Cause I was like, you're going to have a fun time, buddy, with all those guys behind you. And, uh, Unfortunately for him, it didn't end up well. But well, that's where I was yeah. gonna go. Yeah. yeah, he winded up in the back and winded up in a big boo boo. Yeah, yeah. found himself yeah. in trouble and was only able to get twenty right. first for himself uh, for that Smooth. Bristol race. Uh, Trevor, did you get a chance to watch that one? Or I know it's difficult for you because you're running in a different league that night for you to go mm -hmm. and check out some of these races sometimes. Yeah, on the Wednesday ones, unfortunately, uh, I typically just scroll through the highlights. Uh, I'll, I'll scrub through and catch the important stuff. So I caught a little bit of it, um, uh, mostly the carnage uh, at Bristol. But like like Zach said, I mean, in those Gen 4 cars, you get underneath somebody. It's like having a jack on the front of your car, and it just lifts the rear tires up for the guy in front of you, and they have nowhere to go. But, um, you know, I, I saw the uh, uh, Larry getting uh, – kind of hosed and, and that's that's the worst feeling as a driver I, I you know zach can attest to it i you you think that hey i'm gonna stay out and there's gonna be you know five six seven cars that are gonna stay out with me and when you're the lone car out there you're just sitting there just shaking your head because there's nothing you can do about it so uh yeah. and it puts you it puts you in a bad situation unfortunately for larry uh you know i just wasn't able to recover we i mean we know how fast larry is was the the champion last season great in a completely different car but uh you know, he his first time back last season, a couple of years in a brand new car, wins the championship. Yeah, you expect him to come out and be good every week. Just unfortunately, he gets caught up in it in a wreck uh, uh, and not able to get the result that I'm pretty sure he probably wanted. Have mm -hmm. you ever seen that done before in your watching I racing career of him getting caught out there and everybody pitting? Oh yeah, it happened. It's happened to me. Uh, oh, it, it actually happened. So funnily enough, uh, we were at Richmond, not. Were we at Richmond last week? I don't remember. We were at Richmond a couple races ago, and uh, the leader stayed out. Everybody else came in behind him. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. just we'd go into three and four, and with five to go, you know, everybody's trying to do what they can. You could never get a run off the corner to catch him. So he got lucky. But I mean, yeah, I've, and I've, I've had it happen. You just sit there, shake your head, and the hope that they all crash in turn one before <laughs> you get past. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so from the race to the points, the points are kind of ridiculous when you look at the WSSR. You got a couple of guys that are right on the cut line that have a win. John Forbes with getting this win. He was back in, I think, 32nd position before this win. He's now moved up to 24th, which is right inside of the window where if you have a win, you automatically get placed into the playoffs. 
and that would push Ken Campbell out of our 16 drivers if the playoffs were to end now. And you look at some other drivers that are outside the cut line. I, I see in 18th place, James Heater, Ollie Fonseca in 20th, Isaiah Sutherland, who's been the biggest surprise, I think, mm. since joining in. He just showed up late, so he's kind of deeper in the field in 27th in points, but... He's running so well, he could maybe steal a win one of these days. And then Steven Stimpion, who also started running late back in 38th, has not had the best start. But a lot of fast guys that are outside of the playoff window. But at the same point, talked about it at the top of us, talking about Wednesday nights. This class's field is ridiculously high. Oh, uh, that's I think that's one thing I talked about with some guys uh, actually today was we were looking at the points and we were like, wow, like, for someone like me, first off, I've gotten two top fives. I think I've finished uh, a, thir- a second and a third. Um, and then pretty much after that, it's been famine. You know, I haven't really had too many good races other than that. And I'm fifth in points right now, which I think that puts me 40 off the lead and 40 off the cut line. So it's like I'm fifth in points, but I'm the same off the lead off the, to the cut line that it's that close and that competitive. And, I mean, the strength of fields we're getting are the highest strength fields World Series of Sim Racing has ever seen. Like uh, last night, I think was our highest ever, thirty-seven, no, thirty-five seventy-four. I think is what it was. So we've been right at the thirty-four hundred mark the past few weeks, and it's continuously growing. And we're having new guys join, and these guys with six, seven thousand I rings come in, and I mean six different winners in the first six races. That's something. When we made this change, uh, me, Brian, and Cedric, kind of like the. You know, the idea came in. It was, this is what we want World Series of Sim Racing to be. We wanted it to be so competitive that, like, one week you can finish fifth, and the next week you could be finishing 25th and being like, I don't even know what I did wrong. Like, I just, it just wasn't my night. So, and I think that's kind of where we're getting. We're not all the way there yet, in my opinion, but we're building that up. That's, and that's, that's the goal. I want it to be one of the most competitive leagues out there. And uh, so far, the points through the first six races, I think, are super competitive. Yeah, they certainly are extremely competitive. And I think the one thing that might be shocking to most is the driver that's leading the points right now, Shane Tarion, new guy, rookie. We've had out of the six different winners, four of them are rookies. And Shane leading the points is actually driving on a controller, which <laughs> you don't see very often. <laughs> no. um, but he's not the only controller driver that we broadcast on Freaky Fast Broadcast. We'll talk about another one on Thursday <laughs> nights. But I... I know for a lot of people, they always shake their head and like, how how does, crazy. how does a controller driver right. be this fast and on top of the points? Well, Trevor yeah. up there, he's like, wait I, a minute. Yeah, here. I'm in disbelief, dude. <laughs> I, 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 knew, I know they're out there, but holy cow, like, that's, well, that's actually impressive. That's the the impressive. thing about it is not only is he fast, <laughs> the thing about Shane that I like about him is like, it's one thing to be fast, but... You would think on a controller, like, yeah, he could go fast, but how much control and race craft and how much does he possess of that? And that's where I think he actually impresses me more than anything is, like, he's he's one of the straightest driving drivers down the track. It's not like he's going back and forth, got those little wobbles, and you're like, oh, man, his line's just a little bit off. You know, he's got the speed, but his line's not perfect. But he's got everything. And I think that's what's showing out so far from the season is, like, first off, Rockingham, untouchable. That guy was on rails and when i remember his interview he said something about darlington i was like oh god what are we in for at darlington and luckily we were able to reel him back in there and, and bring him back to earth but yeah man that guy is i'm so glad he's joined and you know thanks to sam definitely for getting him and bringing him over because one of the top talents out there and when you see somebody doing the controller that's just special in my opinion yeah Especially I've- in that car like yeah, that's yeah, not an exactly. easy car to drive no. on auto wheel and pedals and he's doing it on a controller exactly. yeah well it's just if it's a style i've known shane for years now uh, he was run, running with my older brother way before i started broadcasting back in the day and, and so i've seen shane always be fast with a controller he took it from on the xbox and dominating in leagues on xbox in, in leagues and then moving to iRacing. and I, I asked him about it for a while and he was like yeah no i've just it was a natural thing where just I didn't have a wheel at the time and I had to use a controller to race. And he says mainly the thing that helps him the most is changing his offset, which is like the one thing that drivers can mess with, with all these leagues, all of them are fixed leagues, but he says that he has to make sure the offset is set up properly. So when he's moving on the straightaways, it's not drifting as much. And if it does drift, he's like set his angle properly on the straightaways. And 
He was telling me the technicality oh, of it. I was Jesus. like, there's no, I could not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He was, was breaking it down for you. Dude, I was trying to grasp it. I was like, dude, my fingers can't do that. I don't know <laughs> how you're doing that. Man, man yeah. has a cause and effect chart. Like, if I do this, it does this. It <laughs> makes sure we he's watch. checking all the boxes. Yeah. <laughs> we watched him on the replay, man, one night. And I'm telling you, you watch his wheel input. You can tell it's a controller. When you watch it, you can tell it's a controller. But he can, like, react so fast to, like, a correction of the car. Like, his wheel will be over here pointing this way, and it'll be that way in, like, a millisecond. So, like, I don't know if that is, like, a little, like, advantage maybe. Like, he can make those quick adjustments really fast, but to be that precise with your thumb <laughs> at that. Like, we're driving with our arms and our legs, these giant levers, you know what I'm saying? This guy's driving with a thumb and fing yeah. index fingers. Like, I mean... yeah. Give him all the credit in the world. Like, like I said, I I uh, I I enjoy racing him. It, it, it definitely is fun. When we get beat by him, we always mess around. Like, man, the controller guy got us tonight. <laughs> got you guys tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, from Bristol, we now head to Legacy, Texas, which I know Legacy tracks with being in the Gen 4. It was kind of a thought process, Zach, uh, for you and the admin crew. Oh, heading to Texas, what is the excitement level or is there a terror level? Because I feel like it's always a, a flip-flop of each week going in of what you're feeling as a driver. Yeah, it is a flip-flop for sure because last week I think there was a lot of terror going into Bristol and I think a lot more calmness heading into Texas, even though it's the 09 version. So we're going back to the old one, which I went and looked. haven't ran a race there since 2019, so that's going to be fun. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah, right? So it's been four years since I've uh, ran a race on that configuration but i think it's the superior texas in my opinion <laughs> if i want to if i want to have an opinion on it but uh the the reasoning behind it well i'll get a little into that is like we decided as a group when we were going back to this gen 4 car we wanted to take kind of some of the old style of the winston cup series or right when the next Hill cup series was starting in 04 in 2004 the schedule for our first seven races it lines up exactly to what they would have done in 04 so that's kind of how yeah. we started it and then the next race after that, we felt like we didn't want to go to Martinsville the next race after that because we felt like Martinsville, Bristol, two weeks apart, that's that's not the greatest idea. So we kind of changed it up from there and added a few different things in. But, yeah, Texas 09, I, I'm i excited. I'm cautiously optimistic that we can get the track working. And that car, again, it gives you options, man. That's, that's all you can really ask for as a driver. And um, hopefully we see tons of passing and some green flag laps where – Kind of like Las Vegas. That was a race I look back at. And if we can have some similar racing to Las Vegas, I'm so excited because that's up there is one of the favorite races I've ever done on the sim in a long time. So really, 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 really happy to see uh, intermediates on the schedule next week. Excited for it. Well, Trevor, Robert, any final thoughts on Wednesday night before we uh, move on to our last series of the week? Not, not for me. Um, I, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm excited to see what the rest of the season sees. Oh, well, okay, I'll add one more thing. I seen, uh, and I don't know if he signed up for the league, but I did see somebody, Zach, uh, hopped in that we talked about on Tuesday night into your Discord. Yeah, uh, we, we did see the Brian McCann name uh, pop in there. So <laughs> I'm excited. I hope he signs up. Brian, if you're watching this video, you haven't signed up yet. We haven't got it yet. Okay. But go, go fill out the entry form. You're more than welcome to come join us. We, uh, We'll take that uh, 5,000 I rate and we'll help that strength field go. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, I think last night me and Zach were just talking about this, Sam, you know, what the strength of field was. And what was it you told it me? 35.74, I think, is what it was. So and it's, that's that's not the, what saying like what Zach's, you know, I rate yeah. is because he does the officials. But you're <laughs> looking at about a 4,500 I rating race oh, like yeah that's just insane yeah that, that's yeah. that's taking an average of what you'll have like 30 some odd cars uh, yeah 34 yeah yeah wednesday night so yeah an average out of 34 cars you've got a 3500 <laughs> i rating i mean that's that's a damn yeah. good strength of field so. <laughs> yeah well yeah. Uh, and and for people that don't know what that average is is meaning mm -hmm. the i rating is coming off the i racing official races that drivers can do right. that's away from league racing it's kind of like your ranking you could say mm -hmm. the higher the number the more you've been racing the faster of a driver that you are most league averages for what we've been covering for the last couple of years were around 2000 to maybe yeah two and a half yeah it's, it's around two yeah. and a half this is a thousand more so that's a yeah that's extreme that's taking all the fast drivers <laughs> yeah. and adding about 12 of them and did <laughs> so yeah. it's 
it's extremely high yeah. level of racing and it's been a pleasure to cover and, and watch these yes. guys and i can't wait it's gonna be a yeah. good one and uh, uh what what do you got trevor I was like, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to go back and watch the uh, the one Wednesday night because Legacy Texas, Texas is, even with the repave um, and little short story, I've been a season ticket holder at Texas since 99. So, wow. and okay. this will be, this will be the first year my dad and I are not going um, mm -hmm. because yeah. honestly, it's just terrible um, yeah. with the, even with the repave, it's just terrible, but I mean, that 09 version in the Gen 4 car, top, bottom, middle. I mean, I think you guys are going to be all over the place in that race. If it goes green, that's going to be a really good race to go watch. And uh, I'm definitely going to have to rewatch that one uh, late Wednesday night or early Thursday. So, I mean, it's going to be a fun one. Cannot wait for it. But then again, that was the start of our trilogy of Bristol races. This was the second <laughs> Bristol race uh, Thursday night. Uh. Stars and Stripes uh, in their vehicle. Stars and Stripes, a unique series. Uh, we started watching them back in season three for those drivers and watching that group develop as they changed which vehicle they were at every single season. The only repeat car that they've ran so far was season one and season six when they went to the ARCA car for both of those seasons. Now for season seven, they're in the Gen 4. And a series and a race that I don't think a lot of people were expecting it was going to come down to the end, but it was Thomas Ogle finally breaking his curse at Bristol, led the most laps for the third season in a row at Bristol, but this time finally grabbing the gold. Uh, Zach, certainly a, a night that Thomas Ogle's happy about, but it really could have gone either way with the timings of those yellows. It, it really could have. Uh, the timing of the yellow is just always so critical, especially I think the one thing that has made the Gen 4 League different on Thursday nights from Wednesday nights is they have... Uh, four sets of tires where we start with six sets of tires so they have three tires in their pits they ran 250 laps instead of 200 like us they had way less options in strategy for us so they were in a tough predicament i think that's what caught a lot of guys out i mean even ogle at one point back in 25th 26 where he had to run through the field on a long green run there to get track position so Though that race was tricky, I think, for a lot of guys, and some guys got caught out by just having the wrong strategy. I mean, he had speed, but sometimes Bristol is just picking the right time to pit and putting yourself in the positions to miss the mess because there's always going to be a mess. It's just how it's going to be, and especially, again, with the Gen 4 car, we talked about it with WSSR. I mean, this car is literally – it jacks up anything and just throws it in the air pretty much, so – it was bound to happen. We were bound to have a good bit of cautions, which we broke the trend of three yellows. Uh, you know, it was three times in a row. I think they had three yellows at Bristol. So definitely a few more yellows this time. But, man, I think strategy was just king in that race. If you didn't play the strategy right, you were not going to have a good finish. Yeah, strategy was certainly a major point. And the timing of the yellows had just a few more yellows than what Wednesday night did with 11. So still a lot of cautions. And the timing of, of it with 250 laps, extra 50 laps really did help as they had a slightly longer green flag run. Some drivers actually were running out of fuel at the end before a late caution came out that gave that extra little bit of dash at the end of that race. But Robert, your second Bristol race in a night in a row, what was going through your mind entering that night, recognizing, oh gosh, we got to do Bristol for a second night? Same thing. Like, oh my God, here we go again. What am I going to do? And, uh, but Stars and Stripes are known for a pretty long green flag run. So it was kind of just laid back again, you know, following, uh, you and Zach around, um, you know, the race and everything. Um, and doing my producing, talking to the chat, and, uh, you know, just doing my normal thing that I do, making sure the audio is where it needs to be and, you know, taking care of that kind of stuff. I'm watching OBS with the bit rates and things like that and just making sure, you know, everything stays smooth so that our viewers get the best, you know, uh, experience of what we're, we're trying to bring them. Um, but then... Well, all of a sudden, out of the blue, my SDK started messing up. And then Sam said, we're going to a commercial real quick. And the minute I hit that commercial button, my game crashed. So halfway through that race, I was in an uproar in the background trying to get loaded back into the game. And I had to reboot the, the, you know, the web browser to get it because it wouldn't see me out of the server. Which, you know, as viewers, if you don't know what iRacing, you know, with iRacing is, is that you're in a server and it knocks you out, but it doesn't see you that you're 
out yet until it actually completely drops you out. Then you can get back in. So that took, you know, what, like three minutes or so. So the time I got that all back up and running, SDK back up and running, um, we got everything running good again. But, yeah, so back of the producing side of thing, technical problems. And that's the things that a lot of people don't see in the background that I deal with sometimes night in, night out. Knock on wood. It's been going pretty smooth. That's the first time that's happened to us in a couple months, actually. Um, so, but we have our uh, SDK every once in a while. Servers go down, things like that. And I'm scrambling in the background, um, trying to get you know an, an overlay up within five minutes or fixing something with five minutes before we go live. Happens night in and night out. Um, so I dealt with that, you know, halfway through that race. And then other than that, you know, my talk about that Bristol race, um, I know, I don't know if Trevor watched it or anything or just got the glimpse of it, but was, uh, Altus, um, our own guy from on, uh, Wednesday night that's in the booth with, uh, Sam. What, what a, what a move. He burned a set of tires by accident on lap 10 of a, 250 lap race and had to ride around three quarters of that race on one more set of tires in pit road uh, so and he turned around and what came home second uh, yeah. second he got second, second for that second. race yeah was, wow. he was in, he was involved in the first caution too wasn't he yeah and, yeah that, that, too. that was why that's he, how he burned his tires yeah yeah he went into pit road that's the one thing that's kind of with stars and stripes that us of the booth, we have some positive thoughts on it, negative thoughts on it of the tire sets. Every race, they only get three sets of tires and pit road to work with. And sometimes it's like, okay, cool. We, we, there's just sometimes there's a gamble that can be made, and sometimes there isn't. But I could not imagine doing 240 laps with just two sets in pit road. <laughs> I, I'm surprised he made it work. Yeah, I don't know how he did it, but he did it. That's tough. That's a tough ordeal to be put in. Yeah, he was put in a box pretty early that he had to figure out a solution to pretty quickly. And hey, all all credit to him. Good job on Josh. Is uh yeah, always good to see a freaky fast guy doing good. <laughs> always is. Josh is the newest member to join with us. Maybe he'll be joining us with the slow slow down uh, low down one of these days. But moving from the race as Thomas Ogle's win now make, gives it the fourth different winner of this series. We've seen two drivers this season already get two wins, that of Ross Tatum winning the first two races. Then it was Diego Valle with his incredible passing in, in race number three and then doubling down once again at Dover to get his second win and Scott Rickard having a win. It's a good top four drivers with wins for themselves, but what's another league? Only 12 drivers making the playoffs and this group, there's again a lot of top end competitors that we know that can be fast in this league. No doubt, I think uh, there's definitely some guys that are uh, starting to show up, and Ogle is one of them. I mean, he had to miss those few races, of course, with his vacation. But mm -hmm. with that win at Bristol, I think that's going to turn his season around. Hess has got two top threes in a row um, coming off his championship, where he started really rocky. It, it was not a good start for him this season, and it still hasn't shown those glimpses of where he had that crazy long run speed like he did last season, but I'm sure at some point he'll get that figured out. But again, I mean, it, it's always a good group over there. They add new rookies in, and some of those new rookies are making storms. I mean, Chris Whirl and James Lowe, those two, they're going to win a race this season. Mark my word, those two will definitely get one. Yeah, they have both been very close. Another one is Adam Pettit, who just uh, him himself and his teammate, because they joined late, they weren't able to qualify for the first three or four races since they joined. Now they're able to qualify, and they both look very quick uh, for that of Pettit and McRae, which McRae, also, he's been caught up in a lot of messes, but got a good solid finish for himself last night. It was good to see that. Uh, and good to talk to him, too, with his interview. He seemed uh, very pleased with it because... We talked about Dover. He surprisingly got a pretty good finish at Dover, but he was a pinball, Sam. He was getting knocked around. I mean, it seemed like every single wreck, he was one of the drivers getting hit in it. And uh, that's always a tough situation to be in. And he's done a good job to bounce back from it, though, especially at Bristol where he had zero incidents. You can come out 250 laps at Bristol, zero incidents, and bounce back from kind of getting pinballed around a few weeks ago. You'll take it. So uh, good for him. Good for him, man. And those drivers trying to make their way forward and – they're still in the middle portions of their regular season, kind of similar to WSSR, where we're hitting the halfway mo moments of the regular season, making the propel of who's going to make that push moving forward. And 
with the way the schedule's looking out for these drivers heading to Nashville Super Speedway, it's another concrete racetrack that we're heading towards. It's the third one of the season. And I'm curious on if those concrete drivers that have, have done well before are going to be able to carry that momentum forward with this Gen 4 car and heading to Nashville that's known for kind of being a one-lane course. I'm I'm curious on how that car is going to react there. It's it's going to be interesting. Um, I, I like Nashville as a driver myself, and I will say, you know, concrete has its characteristics that do carry over, so we could see those concrete guys be some of the favorites again. But I will say that track's a little different too. It's it's they've all got their own unique characteristics again at the end of the day. But I think National Super Speedway with the Gen Four car, the high horsepower, I think that's where that track can shine. So I'm excited for that because normally you you use a good bit of tire there and it it wears them out. So we could see a lot of fall off and a lot of passing. That we could. Well, guys, it's uh that's that's a rundown of all four series that we've covered of all the leagues now this isn't going to be a weekly thing because we cannot keep up with everything weekly we're hoping that maybe this series will be bi-weekly maybe once every three weeks kind of give a rundown on where the leagues are at but uh we'll start off with you robert any final thoughts before we're uh, done with today's episode yes um one final thought um i want to say to everybody out there um we got this in the mail the other day and let me see if i can get it up for everybody this is from our uh, charity race that we did for, um, uh, what's it called again, Zach? You got to help me Juvenile out. Diabetes Research Thank Foundation. Thank you. JDRF. JDRF. It's right there. But we won this um, for being the best uh, multiple team uh, race fundraiser team for, for doing it in their season four. Um, they have seasons throughout the year, and uh, we, we won this, and it got mailed to me, so I got to try to get it there. But anyways, you can see there, and it's a heart. So, I, again, um, I want to say to my team here at Freaky Fest, of course, you guys, all of you guys that helped put this on, did all the work behind the background, got this all set up. Thank you, guys. This is not just sitting in my house. This belongs in everybody's houses. Uh, it's a heart of blue, not gold, but heart of blue. Um, and then also to all our uh, viewers and fans that tune in for every charity race that we do um, with the juvenile diabetes, what we race for that at the beginning of the year. And then we did this charity race here in the middle of the year. We have our, you know, we have two charity races and we raised a lot of money on iRacing side of things. And I just, again, want to say thank you to everyone that has helped viewed, watch, shared, liked, and, and subscribed and all that fun stuff um, here at Freaky Fast on YouTube. And I can't wait till next year when we have our Daytona uh, 500, you know, again and uh, see what we can raise then. And we'll also have our uh, our Coke 600 race and we'll go from there. So, but it's it, it takes a lot of progress to get this all that, the you know, these charity races all done and everything, time and effort. You know, Zach does all the all the graphical stuff. Sam, you're doing a preps and prayer and, you know, getting ready. Trevor called, you know, went into the car on this one here instead of being in the booth. So he prepped and got ready for 400 laps. And just the viewers know out there, or if you're a new viewer and watches, it's just like real life. There ain't no difference. Sitting behind a computer in a racing for 400 laps is grueling. It is tiring. It is. It, it takes a lot out of you depending on all your wheels set up and how things are done. So again, my last note is thank you everybody for making that possible. And it will always be right back there for every stream between them baseballs. And you'll never see it move. So thank you again. Uh, they, it was such a good, fun uh, experience for us to get to work with JDRF and, and as well for doing our Coke 600 event. Uh, can't wait for our next ones. I know we got to start planning for the JDRF here in the next com couple of months to prep for that. But uh, again, thank you for giving us the award uh, that we got from JDRF. Uh, Trevor, before we're done, you got any uh, final thoughts before, uh, or, or any final sayings you want to have for us before we're done with this episode? You know, I'm just glad I get to enjoy, uh, what is it, two days off before I have to, three days off before I have to come back to it, where you, where you and Zach are back in the booth on Thursday nights, uh, you know, and, and Robert, I mean, y'all work Monday through Thursday, I, I just got to show up for one day, so I, I got it easy out of everybody, but no, uh, you know, it's, it's been a blast uh, from from 
starting as a fill-in guy to to now you know covering full send uh full time with you sam and, and being a part of of freaky fest and, and the the charity races as a you know a broadcaster with you for the 500 race uh for the juvenile diabetes to the to being in the race for the 600 um you know even though we we might have died a couple times in that race but hey you know what it, it happens all right it made, mistakes were made but you know it's, it's been a blast and the whole community behind us everybody in the leagues um you know it's a huge shout out to them for for the turnouts that we have and the races that they, that they they put on i mean from monday night to thursday night i mean every race it seems like has been just a, a blast to tune in and watch or just go back and, and rewind and catch glimpses of when i have the chance but it's been a lot of fun and zach over to you yeah first off uh again shout out to uh the everybody helped make the fundraising stuff happen this year it's been amazing to help set that up and uh see we got an award from i mean we raised over two thousand two thousand dollars this year it's that's some good karma points for us. Those feel good. Those feel good to be able to help, uh, you know, people in need like that. So yeah. it's, it's something that we're trying to do and uh, definitely continue doing. But yeah, it's been a great week. I'm excited for the week coming up. Hope we can get through Bristol and survive. <laughs> and uh, then from there, we'll just keep on rolling, man. Playoffs are actually soon for a few of these leagues. Uh, we'll try to continue doing what I do as driver and continue the broadcast and be better each and every time we do it, man. So it's, uh, it's fun. And uh, I can't wait to see where the future brings us always. Cannot wait for our next one. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of our first episode of the Slowdown Lowdown. It was a pleasure to have Robert with me, Trevor, Zach, and myself, Sam Dyer. And uh, also, big shout out to Zach's dog for uh, being involved as well in the background. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, he's right. mad. He's mad. <laughs> he's not happy. We had to. We stole Zach away for an hour, and he's not happy about it. No, but not having it. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for joining with us. And we will see you on our next slow down, lowdown, giving you the updates on all the series that we cover here on Freaky Fast Broadcasting. <laughs>